40 points down under the master. Find a way. Stand up like Matthew Nix and roll like you never had before. Here's Liam Ryan. It's been a tough day for everyone, but the class will finish it. Hello, I'm Damien Barrett. Welcome to Access All Areas, brought to you by Sportsbet. It was an incredible opening to the 2021 season. There were upsets, there were comebacks, there's a big-name player in hot water. Matthew Lloyd, as always, is with me. And, Lordo, Paddy Dangerfield, straight to the tribunal. Yeah, he's in trouble, Damo. Unfortunately, I don't think it was, it was a malicious act, but uh, when you go to bump and you have a head clash, even if it's accidental like Paddy's was... You'll get time, and I think it's a minimum two weeks uh, here. For, for I said exactly the same yep. way. If it's three, I'm not going to be too angered by that either, yep. Lordo. I think one's not enough. Two might be right, but three, I wouldn't be surprised. That I think we need, as an industry, to, to remove this conversation around that's an accidental mm. hit. Now, now, it is. It clearly is. But when you make the intent and the decision to bump and not tackle or to not stop, um, the, the consequences are both on the player you hit and for yourself now. And, and I reckon for too long, there's been ambiguity and confusion around that. Today, mm. I reckon the system's got a chance to absolutely put a line on this. No more of that. Yeah, he's in a pretty bad way, Jake Kelly. So he won't be playing for at least 12 days. So you think Dangerfield will, yeah, at a minimum two weeks, potentially three. Yep. Look, it's probably not even the biggest mm. problem for the Geelong Cats right now, the Dangerfield's unavailability for a couple of weeks as we see it. Uh, the pressure the Crows applied in their big win, their big shock win over the, the Cats was, was next level. Yeah, the Crows, uh, youngest squad in the AFL. So this was just one of their great wins in, in recent times. Well done to Matty Nix. He's been under the pump after 13 losses last year. They finished the season well, but that pressure will help you beat anybody. And I think they went into this game thinking, Geelong, they're not that quick. So if we can pressure them, not allow their short chipping uh, link-up sort of play, we can beat them. And uh, that first quarter, first half was as good as anything. And this this chase and tackle, that is just wonderful, wonderful football from a young man who's you know, making his way in the game as well. So uh, a young Hamill it was. So And this this one here from another young Lockie Murphy. A lot of players trying to make their way in the game and they went hunting on Geelong and took a big scalp on the weekend. It was great to see the Crows mm. do what they did, didn't they? Wasn't it? Um, Hawkins was again one out. He has been for a while mm. at the Cats. They bring in Jerry McCameron twice in the past eight weeks. He pings hamstrings in the off-season. He's going to be out for some time. It was uh, pretty ugly to watch the way they brought the ball into their forward line. I thought after half-time, Adelaide looked out on their feet because they had injuries. And I just thought they burnt so many opportunities because they wanted to go to Tom Hawkins. Some of these I just want to highlight. Like, Gary Rowan, give it over the top to Jordan Clark. And mm. that's a nice, easy shot for goal. But they go to Tom Hawkins. I thought that was poor. Isaac Smith, they've bought to the club for this very reason. Give it to Isaac right now. But Gary Rowan, again, wants to go to Tom Hawkins. So this is a real issue for, Ge for Geelong uh, because, again, long bomb, straight to Hawkins. Players just know what to do. We'll go and intercept. So it's why Cameron's come to the club, but they have to be smarter going inside 50 yep. if they're to win the flag this year. St Kilda ground out a, what I thought was a really impressive win against UWS uh, yesterday, Lordo, up there in Sydney on, on, on a bog, wasn't it? They, they fell down to 11 points behind in the last quarter. Himmelberg, as we're about to see here, could have put the uh, Giants 16 up. He didn't. It left the door open. It got tense from that moment onwards, but the control that the Saints had pretty much from that moment onwards was... was was, was proof this team is going to be finals bound again. Yeah, goal kicking just doesn't get better, does it? That Hilmerberg, that, that could have nearly been the sealer. Uh, but this side under Brett Ratton has belief. Uh, they've got a great mix of toughness and outside run speed. They've got a you know, great balance. This was a beautiful kick from Lockie Keefe to get them back within a point. But St Kilda, they just can't be denied. As I said, I think they're in a wonderful spot. This was a contentious one. Was, was it, it a, a free kick? or a block? <sighs> I've got no problem with it being paid a free kick, provided every other incident like that yeah, this series as well. But I don't think it was a tackle, so maybe it shouldn't have been paid uh, in the end. These were the Saints that were missing. Max King and Zach Jones will be back this week, but what a win on the road in sloppy conditions. Brad Crouch, Hanabry, Marshall, Geary. For all the, I'm not sure, is in their best team, but every other player, aside from that, is in their best team. And they are in for a great year if they can get some wins nice and early with all those players out. Again, I think we've learned over the journey not to make too many sweeping statements about uh, a team after round one. But are you worried about the Giants and their lack of speed? Uh, 
Well, th those conditions should have suited the Giants. Uh, sloppy conditions, Taranto, uh, those sort of players. Because this is where the Saints in the third yeah. quarter, Lotto, they're a point of difference, this yeah. club. They, they can play in bursts, can't yeah. they? Yeah. And, and they did. They, they did, yeah. And I think the depth of the Giants is my biggest concern, Damon. I think they've got a great top end, but they've just lost so many players over the years that I reckon their bottom end isn't as strong as, say, what a St Kilda's bottom end is. And they opened it up. Timmy Membry was lucky he's kicked this goal because he's burned a few players <laughs> over the top. But the small forwards, Sinclair, Loney, Higgins, Gresham, Billings, and you throw King and Marshall and Ryder into that mix. I don't yeah. think they lack for too much, the Saints. Yeah. You look at the smalls of the Saints getting the job done yesterday, uh, as is so often the case with the Eagles, it was their big man in the air, wasn't it? By, at both ends of the ground. In their, in their grinding win against the Gold Coast Suns. There was a lot to like about the Gold Coast. Uh, they were in it right up to their ears, you know, to, to three-quarter time. And I just thought... Barras and McGovern down one end, and then you've got Allen, Darling and Kennedy down the other end. Oh, it's just a weapon that not too many other teams have. They didn't play amazingly well, yep. uh, the Eagles. They did had no Shuey and Yo in yesterday's game, so they're only going to get stronger. But I think the inexperience of King, uh, Day, Ballard, Lacocious, just the aerial skills of the Eagles was too much. This guy here, yeah. how good can he become, Oscar Allen? I think we could easily say he'll be in the best two or three uh, four key position players in the game. That good. Yeah, that's how yeah. good I think he is. He, he, we haven't even uh, got the tip of the iceberg, really, with how good he yeah. can be. Yeah. He's been a work in progress, hasn't he? But he's starting to show. Yeah. Um, Matt Rowell's last game of 2020 ended with injury. It was early in the season, around five. Uh, first game back this year. This is the left knee injury that he's now got. Now, as we speak right now, Lordo, we don't have the official club diagnosis on this, um, but he's going to be missing multiple weeks by all reports. He's that good. You just want to see him get some luck. You know, you, you, some players just... Um, Unfortunately, always injured and he's had his you know, shoulder and now this one. So it'd be worse if it was hamstrings and, and quads and soft tissues. He's just been unlucky in both incidents. So yeah, hopefully we can see him in the back end of the season. Yep. Port Adelaide did a number on North Melbourne after they um, after they weathered a pretty um, hard-fought yeah. first quarter, didn't they? And the, the contrast in, in skill of these two teams, um, there won't be a greater discrepancy in any match this year. What I like about Port Adelaide is they seem like they're on and they're hungry right now. You know, there's excuses, say, Geelong, we had a less pre-season, or Brisbane, we might have had four weeks less training. Well, Port are the same, but they are hungry. They, they just smashed Adelaide in the pre-season and now they've done it to North Melbourne. So... They're, they've got options everywhere. They're tough on the inside, Damo, but just so... Look uh, at some of these areas from the North, yeah, too, Lord. They're, they're, they're actually unforced. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, you can talk about the pressure, which you just have mm. about the power, but, but these kicks here are not being caused by the power. Yeah. That's right. They're just uh, at rock, rock bottom in terms of... They're starting all over again, unfortunately. And, and you and, contrast that. Yeah, just... They you just you wouldn't know, highlight this kick, too. <laughs> they know each other's games inside out. And you've got, you know... You know so many good players. Butters, Gray, Rosie, Fantasia, and then you've got Dixon, Marshall... Yeah, in the forward line with George Yardis. This is no good from Zeebel. He's an experienced player. He's got to be better than that. But you add Alir and Fantasia into that. Uh, they're mm. another team who would be shocked if they're not in the last four come September. Well, Fantasia kicked four. Is he a flat-track bully? Lord, I don't, I don't want to be too critical of a bloke playing his first game for his new club. But, again, it's North Melbourne. Mm. Now, I've seen him kick 40-plus in a season for Essendon. And he's just been... He was probably unhappy in that environment. Could never get his body right. And there's going to be some weeks he gets the number one uh, small defender and there's going to be other weeks he gets the fourth yep. defender. So I'll, I'll be surprised if he doesn't kick 35-plus goals for the season, which is a huge return to allow for Robbie Gray to play more midfield time. It does look a, a really nice fit, doesn't it? Him up there in that forward line with those uh, with, with Dixon tapping it to him, uh, as we just the, saw there. The current game suits Fantasia. Yep. Quick ball movement and a team that's uh, yep. on top of their game. Nine rounds into the season. Let's see what round one has done to the markets with Nathan Brown of Sportsbet. Yeah, thanks, Damien. Talking of Port Adelaide, I see that both you and I have them as the premiership fancy in our season predictions. Lordo has the Tigers with good reason. Brownlow medal, you've both gone for Bontem Pally, where I've gone for Paddy Cripps. He started well the other night. Paddy Cripps slowed down a bit and a mixed bag for the Coleman. Now, the premiership market, I expect the Cats to drift a little bit more than that. The biggest mover, though, has been Port Adelaide, 80 to 7, now $6.50 for the power. Brownlow medal, a lot of the most fancies would not have voted. The only two on that page, I reckon Dustin Martin would have got the three and Travis Boak probably the two or the three. So, and then on the next page, Sam Walsh, 81 into 41. I think he would have got the two votes the other night against the Tigers. Coleman medal market. Same sort of thing at the top of the market. Not a lot of movement there. Josh Kennedy is there, of course, but it all gets interesting on the next page. Lance Franklin played in the twos, played well. 
Does he play a lot of games? That's a big price for someone who can kick some big bags. And Jack Rewalt kicked four the other night. Speaking of, before we leave the Brownlow medal, Lordo, it looks like another medal for the midfielders. The four was not getting a look in. Good luck and gamble responsibly. Thank you, Nathan Brown from Sportswear. That's how it all looks after the first nine games of 2021. Lordo, one of those games was uh, one of the rippers of the round, the Hawthorne-Essendon match on Saturday night. Uh, eight goals to the mm. Bombers in the second quarter, eight goals to Hawthorne in the third quarter, one point win to the Hawks. Yeah, I thought Essendon were brilliant in the first half when they were dominating through the midfield. Zach Merritt and Andrew McGrath were dominant, but then they put Liam Shields to Zach Merritt, shut him down, and there was a piece of play late in the game where I just thought that Essendon could have played this a little bit smarter. So Essendon are up by five points with two minutes on the clock to go. Dylan Shield, I'd hold that ball in, get a ball up. He just handballed it out into nowhere. So we see the ball, Hawthorne are off to the races. Yep. Nothing the defenders can do about this. Too much space down there, Tim O'Brien kicks the winning goal. And he did kick the goal, he had to do it. Um, this is what you saw just a moment ago on Channel 7's coverage. This is what you're now going to see, exclusive down the ground vision on afl.com.au. This is what should have happened, Lauder. Yeah, this is Essendon all getting sucked to the contest, and this is Hawthorne, who need the goal. They need the winning goal so they can take risks. So they spit out of the contest. So that's the first mistake Essendon have made. Too many midfielders at the contest. That's where they all are. Five around the ball. No defensive run, which was like the second half. And this is where Kale Hooker should be standing. Right. Two minutes to go, you're protecting five points. Create a seventh defender, an eighth defender, if need be. But there's no one back there. It's the not as easy to do now, is it, with the six and six and six that's combo? That's right. But I think you just start on the edge of the square yep. and then you just roll back around. So I think that's what should happen. Uh, yeah, you, don't, you can't start them in defensive 50, but it's not that hard to work them around. This was the second half, so... It was pretty much, yeah, they swapped jumpers at half time. It was poor defensively from Hawthorne in the first half. But what I think they need, they need to adapt. Richmond weather the storm. They might lose momentum, Richmond, Damo, but they don't allow eight goals in a quarter. And that's yeah. what these two teams, they'll be bottom six for that reason. Because David's, both of them? Yeah, both teams yeah. will be bottom six. I think David Teague suffers from this. When they lose momentum, they allow big goals scored. It's, it's easy to say, Lordo, yeah. to stop momentum. How do you actually do it quickly? Well, well, I think what you do, as I said, you can slow the game down. Yeah. Slow the... Take the tempo away. You can put a player behind the ball. Your wingman can roll back and protect you a little bit. So that's probably the aim. And, and why don't you try and... Sh Tommy Mitchell had 19 disposals. Did Essendon look to shut him down through that third quarter? Mm. I don't think they did. Yep. We saw enough of Will Day in his debut yeah. season last year to know that he's going to be something special. I, I think on the first showing of 2021, it, it's going to come quickly. Yeah. He reads the ball in the air exceptionally well. He'll go and become a gun midfielder in time, but it's just he doesn't panic. Scotty Pendlebury stuff. He just doesn't blaze away. He just waits for the option. Clean. Here, just the hands. He just, just the weighted hand The weighted yeah. handball. And we'll watch a kick. Even that, just reading where the ball's going to go out of the kick. And this last bit... Everyone's telling him to slow down, but he says, no, Look I can kick. see yeah. something in the corridor there. And that was another goal that Hawthorne kicked late in the game, which helped them win the match. You see him in midfield eventually. I, I think so, yeah. yeah. A bit like Callum Mills. Start in the back line and yeah. work your way into the midfield. Yeah. Something we haven't always seen from the Swans is a dynamic mm -hmm. brand of football. We saw it uh, in round one against the Brisbane Lions and, it, and it, it destroyed last year's prelim finals. I think John Longmire has been working at this for 12 months. I saw signs of this last year where they, they improved their scoring output, but they probably just conceded too many and got too many injuries at the end of the day. But we're going to look at the young kids coming up shortly. I'm still with Franklin to add to the team and some experienced players who have been injured. But this was dynamic ball movement. I don't think Brisbane were prepared for what was coming their way. Uh, they probably thought, add Danaher to the mix and we'll be right. But this was a hungry swan side, which were too good in the end. I, I just love what they brought. And you're right, they, they probably underperformed in a win-loss scenario last year. Yeah. But I, I think internally they were happy to get those 17 games collectively in, into their, their players. Um, the big unknown here is, uh, is Buddy Franklin now getting through a pretty solid uh, training session or match simulation session and available now for selection. This is the under-25s at this club. There's a premiership in that mix. Yeah. I think you're right. And what the, the, the blessing that uh, Sydney have, they have a coach that's not under pressure, a coach that's secure, and he has blooded all these young swans over the last couple of years and they are set for a wonderful future. Might not play finals this year, but... Uh, I reckon you know, they will. You reckon they will? Yeah, yeah. I do. Logan McDonald's mm. going to be in yeah. it too, isn't he? Yeah, oh, he's, and Campbell, the young midfield, he was top five in the draft. So 
the guns keep coming to the Swans, and they've done really well out of their academy. Yep. Are you worried about the Lions uh, on, not, on that showing? Oh, I hope it could be the best thing for them. Yep. Chris Fagan, I think it'll be a tough week. You'd love to be a fly on the wall in their meetings uh, because they were pretty poor on the weekend. Yep. Melbourne did what it had to do. It had some injury concerns yep. of its own up forward and, and was able to, uh, I suppose, cash in on the unavailability of key players of the Dockers. But the Dockers uh, just didn't have much system, Lordo. We've said this for a while about the Fremantle Dockers. Who can score for them? And, you know, Ross Lyon moves and it goes to um, uh, Justin Longmuir, but nothing's really changed. And uh, Unavailability of, yeah, of, of that's right. Lob, Lob, Lob and Walters, yeah, who didn't help. Be any, but and then think... Pierce went, was tries a forward. Yeah. He went down again. And Hamling later in the piece went down as well as a, as a key back. Walters is a, is a, a star. He'd make a big difference. But he's still not going to win you a premiership because they need a tall. I'm not sure Lob is the answer either. So yeah. Uh, yeah, their ball movement was really poor. They've still had a gun midfield in there, but they just did not use the ball well enough. That to be smarter with what they had. And Lever, May, that, that were exceptional. We saw them prominently there. Are they the best one-two combo of, of key backs in the comp at the moment? Oh, McGovern, Barras are good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are they right, up there? They'd be right up there. And, yeah. and Lever just needs some luck with injury. May's yeah. worked out what you need to be to be a star AFL footballer. So it was a good uh, pressure-relieving win for Melbourne yeah. on the weekend. The Dogs in their mm. Premiership year of 2016 were the slickest user of handball. Uh, they displayed that particular facet uh, with precision against Collingwood. Yeah, I thought the scoreboard flattered Collingwood. Six 16 points. I thought it could have been a lot more, uh, a lot more inside 50s, and just the depth of that midfield. It's just going to be overwhelming for some teams throughout the year, and I thought it was overwhelming for Collingwood. And we'll go through midfield by versus midfield shortly. But I thought the Trelaw didn't do a lot. Yep. But he just adds another midfielder to the mix. It's, it's a layer of depth yeah, to the midfield. Is. Yeah. It is. And Stefan Martin, he was wonderful. Just Brody Grundy has had 11 of the last 12 Brownlow votes against uh, the Western Bulldogs, but. Yeah, I thought they broke even. Tim English just keeps getting better and better. Steph Martin just could be one of the recruits of the year. When they're picking the ball around like they did, they're going to rack up numbers. Mm. But, but that is damning lined up with what Collingwood was able to get uh, by way of number. Because Bailey Smith kicked two goals as well. Jack McRae just gets you by a thousand cuts. Hunter, Dunkley, Bontempelli's a superstar. But I look at Lipinski gets down to 26 disposals. Look at the drop-off. Dugowie, I thought, was pretty poor on the weekend. Darcy Moore, if they didn't have him, they would have lost by six or seven goals. So losing Trelaw, losing Phillips, losing Stevenson makes for a long year for Collingwood. A really long year? Oh, I think so, yeah. yeah. They'll be doing well to make the eight. OK. Mm. OK. Even after round one, you're prepared yeah, to say I, that. I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Stephen Rowe uh, has a son who uh, played his first game, James Rowe, on the weekend. It was beautiful radio the way he covered it. But, but let's go back to one of the goals he kicked below. Look, this is a really good goal, but we're just going to take you on another angle in a moment. Was he licking his lips before he actually kicked this goal? He's got his father's bubbly personality. And I reckon he was. He's been kicking hey, goals. Look, he's licking his lips, literally, Lotto. Yeah, the tongue sticking out. He was kicking goals like this in the SNFL for yep. years, so it's wonderful to see him get just his Just a bubbly personality yeah, right. and, and bubbly input into that win and that team at the moment. Um, I love this photo, Lotto. The sons of two Crows greats in Taylor Walker and Rory Sloan. This is what so many things that make footy so great. Hugo Walker at the far, the far side there and obviously young Sonny Sloan. So Crows of the future, watching their fathers warm up, that is just a beautiful sight. An early favourite for Photo of the Year. It is, yeah. for sure. Hey, Laura, thanks as always. Thanks, and thanks for watching Access All Areas. We'll be back next Monday.